Okay, so today we're going to think about computational thinking, uh, the key principles of computational thinking, what they mean and how they uh, work as well. So quick starter activity, you've got three key terms on the left, you may have heard of some of these, and on the right hand side you've got three definitions, uh, simply either in your head or just having to think about whether you want to number them. So flowchart being one, algorithm being two, should okay be in three. Okay, so the top definition, a process or a set of rules followed in the calculations of problem solving um, is an algorithm, a notable, uh, notation resembling a simplified programming language using uh, used in program design is pseudocode, and then a graphical representation of a computer program is your flowchart. So we're looking at the principles of computational thinking, so the key points being abstraction, decomposition, and algorithmic thinking. The requirements for um, this section of the OCR J277 specification, you just need to understand the principles of how they're used uh, to define and refine problems. So first of all, let's look at what abstraction is. So in essence, abstraction is the process of using variables and symbols to represent real world problems. And we do this as well by uh, hiding or removing all of the unnecessary detail within our sort of problem. So we can take, an, uh, there's a whole host of examples you can use with this. So for example, things like train maps, if you've ever been on a train or seen on a train station, you'll just have a straight line with a series of dots, which represents the direction of the train and the stops that it will stop at. It's not really relevant that how far apart those dots are. It's not really relevant if there's any curvature in the track because the train will ultimately just start and stop at each of those stations. So that's a one example of abstraction. Another is in the game of snakes and ladders. So if we were to program the game snakes and ladders, there are certain things that we would need to take consideration for, such as the board, and in snakes and ladders, we typically have a board that starts from one and goes through to 100. Now in the computer, it doesn't really matter the um, sort of shape of the board, so to speak. The computer just needs to know that there is from one to 100 spaces that the player can move along. We also need to consider the player itself. Now it's not really relevant whether we have really um, stylized player tokens or whether it's just simply a circular disc or whatever it is for the computer's purpose it might just store the player as p1 or p2 for player one and player two the appearance is not relevant equally when we think about the snakes and ladders we don't necessarily need to represent a snake or a ladder in a sort of diagrammatical way we can just simply reference them as s1 as 2 s3 as snake 1 2 and 3 and ladders ladders 1 2 and 3 as l1 l2 l3 again it's removing that necessary detail, but given us still something that we're able to work with in order to um, create our application. So abstraction, just to recap, is that idea that we're removing unnecessary detail or hiding unnecessary detail so that we can focus on the problem in hand. Once we've abstracted and we've got our rough idea, we can decompose our problem. So using decompositions, decomposition is that idea of taking a much larger problem and breaking it down into a number of smaller problems because smaller problems are easier to solve. We can then solve them independently. So if we take a much larger problem and break it down into five smaller parts, we solve each of those five parts independently, meaning we can test each of those five parts independently as well. And it will make it a much more manageable process. Once we've solved all those uh, smaller problems that make up that large problem, we can piece our, our solutions together to form our answer for that program. So again, using that idea of snakes and ladders. So in snakes and ladders, you might first solve how the player moves. So you might want to just consider that the how you get your player to move through a sequence of numbers and then you might consider your win condition so it might be for example the fact that the player wins when they reach the tile number 100 and so we've got the movement we've got the winning condition so when they reach 100 and it might be then that you want to work on the snakes and then the ladders or the ladders and the snakes it, it doesn't matter one way or the round but once we solve all of these individual problems and combine them together you'd have then a working game so decomposition is that idea of breaking the problem down into smaller component parts, make it easier to solve um, a much larger problem. And then algorithmic thinking, the final point, is a relatively straightforward one. And this is just that idea that you're able to process this, uh, and identify all of the steps needed to solve a problem. And this might be taking that larger problem and breaking it down into those individual parts. So you might decompose that problem and break those into individual steps of a sequence that can be then uh, followed in order to solve a problem.